good morning everyone today is thursday august 27th 2020 the weather is nighttime the time is 9 31 p.m and i am fantastic how are you good good great um so today i'm very happy to introduce my new series living with mel and as you can see by the title, I'm opening it up with the segment called How to Be Alone. So the reason I started this series is because I'm like, hey, you know what? At 24, I've got a lot of untapped life advice that I could be sharing with other people. You know, I've gone to university. I have two degrees. I've had many jobs. I've lived in many apartments, paid a lot of bills, moved to a different country, made a lot of friends, learning a different language kind of. So I thought, why not let you guys in on some of these life secrets, you know? So please strap in. I don't know. I don't know why I'm, I have two seat belts, but I do. So strap in and uh, join me for the ride. So I fucking why the fuck am I doing that? Alrighty then, class is in session. Before we get started. Please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already because I have content that is all over the place but it's still all good. Um, also like if you like my weird hairstyle that's happening right now. Sorry, I got out of the shower and it dried horribly and this is what's happening. But anyways, uh, let's get started. How to be alone. This is something I learned over the year of living by myself here in Japan. Obviously, I moved here and I knew nobody, knew absolutely nobody, and I have to, had to quickly adjust living alone in a country where I couldn't speak the language and, you know, the variety of people I could talk to was very small. So I spent a lot of time alone. And then just when I started making a good network and group of people, Corona happened. And then it was really alone. Like, I was in my apartment, I don't know how many times I could say alone in this video, you should count, take a shot for every time I say alone in this video, but yeah, I really had no one with me, I didn't even have pets, and pets is something I've had for, you know, the past, like, 10 years of my life, like, I've always had an animal or creature in the room, so... Being bare bones alone was so difficult and coming through this, I've really learned some things that have helped me that I feel I can share with you guys, especially like since Corona is still kind of a thing, like some people are still self-isolating or we're isolating from others more than we used to. So being alone is probably something that we're struggling with a little bit, like all of us are struggling with a little bit. So I thought I'd do this video and here it is. So first I want to talk about like some downsides of being alone or why being alone is perceived to be bad or what makes it worse. So the first thing is the reason we don't like being alone is because we're really bored when we're alone. Like there's only X amount of things to do when you're bored and when you're with other people, you know, other people are entertaining and fun and it's exciting, you know, what's going through somebody else's mind isn't what's going through your, your mind. You know, you're always with your own mind. So you look for other people to provide something that you yourself cannot provide. And we feel bored because we're doing things that are not stimulating to the brain. Like we're watching Netflix or we're on social media and that can only be entertaining for so long, you know? So um, I was listening to this podcast. It's called On Purpose, the one by Jay Shetty. I'm absolutely obsessed with it. Um, and I was listening to one of the episodes and he said, the opposite of boredom is learning. So I think that's so true. Like when we're alone, we don't really actively seek out to learn things. We just do things that kind of numb our brain or like kind of distract us, but we don't think, do things that we perceive as hard. We perceive learning as hard because when we think of learning, we think of school, we think of math, we think of like things that we were taught to learn that we didn't like, but learning doesn't have to be about boring things. So keep that in mind. Um, another thing, a downside of being alone is people go, well, when I'm alone, like I get really sad. I get really in my head. I get really down on myself and I get sad. Well, the reason why you're in your head, this comes back to point number one, is because you're bored. Because there's nothing in there. <laughs> like if you're just stuck in this self monologue, like oh, I'm so lonely. Nobody likes me. You know, 
I could be with other people right now. Why aren't I with other people right now? You're trying to use other people's happiness and energy to block you out from the fact that you're literally not using your brain to do anything. So this comes back to boredom. This comes back to being stagnant and not learning and changing. Um, another big thing, a big, big thing that I think makes people feel more alone is social media. And I know... Oh my god, I don't want to be that person. I love social media. I'm on Instagram all the time. Um, but I think we go on Instagram and we see our friends hanging out together and we're like, oh, I want to be with them. Or like, why didn't they invite me, you know? Or, you know, you see your friends with their family. Maybe because of Corona, like, you haven't been able to see your family because, like, they live kind of far or they're a bit elderly. So you don't want to, like... You don't want a chance getting them sick so you've really distanced yourself from them so when you see like your other friends with their family and you know it looks so fun and so nice you're like damn that really sucks like why can't i have that it makes you feel more alone for me something that's really driven me crazy is seeing your family all together without you having their great old family time with all of your cats and your dog like being out here in japan um and looking like on my sister's Instagram and stuff, how my whole family got together at the cottage for this nice, like, huge barbecue. I was like, well, ain't that nice? Having a good old time without without old Melly Moo. Do you miss me? Do you miss me? <laughs> you know, so it's so easy. I know social media, like, lets us connect with people and, like, right in our hands, we get to talk to people who are a million miles away. But also, I feel like it does put in our face, like, again and again, like, you're alone, you're alone, you're alone. Because if you scroll long enough on Instagram, you're going to see your two friends hanging out. Or you're going to see, you know, your aunt and your grandma hanging out. Or you're going to see your best friend and your sister hanging out. I see you guys. I see you. Like, <laughs> but you need to take that with a grain of salt, you know? People post their pictures on social media, and you might see a picture of these two people together, and you're like, well, why didn't they invite me? Like, they didn't even ask. I'm free today. But you know what? They could have hung out, like, last Thursday when you were busy, but they were saving, you know, they were saving this picture for now on Friday so they could do, like, a flashback Friday. You don't know. So, again, I think that's social media really, like, not corrupts, but it really puts our alone blinders on. Um, and... Lastly, I don't think this is really a downside. I didn't know really how to classify this, but like I think when we're alone and like we think we want to be with other people so much that a lot of like young people, especially gr young people, who the fuck am I? A lot of people like our age, young adults is what I meant to say, we will go like grab gravitate to hookups or like friends with benefits or like sex because we're confusing that like want of intimacy and closeness for sex and we find out that like we find that like hey this actually really isn't even enjoyable like why am i here you go through some existential crisis but like truly you can find that somewhere else and so you're not feeling alone you're just craving intimacy that you could probably find in your life from other people so those are a few downsides and like the bad, the bad blinders of being alone. But now let me tell you the good things, the good things about being alone. So here are the good things about being alone. Sorry that I look so beautifully misted. Um, I'm in my bathroom today, if you haven't noticed, because it is um, 9.45 PM at night and the lighting in here is the best, but also my AC is way in the other end of this apartment and Japanese apartments don't have like central, like heating or central AC. It's a thing, it touched the wall. Three rooms that way. Not three rooms, I don't have three rooms. I meant like, this is the bathroom, then there's the hallway and then there's the bedroom where the AC is. It's hot, end of story, it's hot. Anyways, the good things about being alone. First, one of my personal favorites is you can have an extremely personalized routine. If you're alone, you can literally create the best formula that will produce the best you every day and have nobody tamper with it because you don't have to have other people in it. Like if you want to wake up at 6.16 a.m. every day but have an alarm at 6.09 and 6.13, you can do it. You can do it because nobody's going to stop you. Like if you want to have the same meal Monday through Thursday, you can do it. You could truly do it because you don't need to please anybody else but you. 
If you want to fall asleep to the soothing sound of whales, you could do it. You could do it. Like, you could be so strict within your personal life when you're not catering to someone else. So a big thing, and this will be for people who, you know, have ever lived with like a significant other or a boyfriend or girlfriend. Oh, you give a lot of your routine up or you have to adopt some of their routine into their, like it's a bit of an, an adopt of each. Like if they're an early riser and you're a late riser, like you're gonna have to deal with that alarm. Like if you like, eating in but they like eating out you're gonna have to compromise you can't eat in as much as you want you're gonna eat out more than you want so when you're alone like you truly have the chance to do everything the way you want exactly the way you want with nobody stopping you so take advantage of that and completely structure your life exactly the way you want it to and sometimes like something i've found is habits or like things that i've picked up from other people's routines like I've lived with so many people for so many years. I've lived with friends. I've lived with roommates. I've lived with like a boyfriend. You don't notice that in your routine, you've picked up things from other people. And sometimes there are things that like bad habits or things that you don't even like doing. Drop them. Like really reflect on what you do in a day and be like, hey, like, why do I do that? I could not do that. I don't have to do that. So yeah, definitely figure that out. Um, the second thing, learn how you like to spend your time. Now, this might seem funny, like, you know, oh, I know how I like to spend my time. I love, I love doing this X, Y, and Z. You think you know how you like to spend your time because you've done it so much. Or it's something you become familiar doing, you know. If in your family you're accustomed to watching TV every evening, I bet you're, when you're settling in for the night, you're putting on Netflix or you're watching something. I do not like watching TV. My, my family is a big TV family. I don't enjoy watching TV. I like watching nature documentaries, if the right conditions are met. But other than that, I don't really enjoy, because I, like, I find it so hard to get invested in something. I have like a very small attention span. So recently I actually have found out that I do enjoy watching YouTube, because the clips are so small. It's 15 minutes of your life, like, bing bang, done. Like, I love fast things. So... Yeah, but do you know how many times I used to like hang out with friends and just watch Netflix or like Netflix and chill? That's not something I enjoy doing. Like, so truly I shouldn't do it when I'm by myself. And also, this also leads me to like, when you're with other people, like don't settle for doing things that you don't like doing, you know? Because now you know what you like to do. Tell them, why don't you share? Why don't you share what you like doing with other people? Because they might find that they've never done it or they're more interested in doing it, you know? Uh, lastly, another benefit of being alone is um, you can learn something new. Learn something new. Learn something new every day. No, truly, you can learn something new. Have you ever heard somebody learning to play the violin? It's dreadful. It sounds horrible. It sounds awful. Now, for the one person watching this going, I want to learn how to play the violin. Well, you know what? You could do that on your own time. Truly, you can spend some time by yourself learning how to play the violin. Like, things that other people don't want to learn, that you want to learn, you can do that when you're by yourself. Facts. Like, we learn things that our friends like to learn. So, boys, they'll get together and, oh, like, we, I want to play a game with you. Like, let's play a game, all of us together. There are only so many games that you guys can play together. And sometimes you compromise like you don't really like the game but you're like ah oh, like i get to play with x amount of people we can all be online so it's gonna be super fun so then you like learn how to play the game and you convince yourself you're like yeah this game is fun when really this other solo game that you want to play is more appealing to you learn what you want to learn you know that's what alone time gives you it gives you the time to learn things that maybe other people don't want to learn or other people have no interest in that you do so take that time you know Okay. Okay, sorry for the video um, incongruency, but my door's open because I was literally sweating to death. Uh, so yeah, you're just gonna have to deal with it. But here's the meat of the video. I'm gonna give you tips on how to be alone. There are four tips on when you're alone, how to be alone, and two tips for when you're not alone, but how to prepare and how to better prep yourself for alone times. <laughs> that sounded dirty. But anyways, six tips in total.
the first tip, and if you haven't got the gist of this whole video, is learn something new. Truly, like, the reason why you don't like being alone is because you're bored. And like I said before, from the On Purpose podcast, I learned that boredom is the opposite of learning. So learning is the opposite of boredom. And if you're engaging your brain, then you're not going to be bored anymore. And you're not going to have time to feel like, oh, I'm alone, I'm lonely. Like... Learn something interesting for you. Like, learn something that you actually enjoy. When you think of learning, don't think of school. Don't think of, like, high school or university or college. You know, when you had to learn things like algebra or, like, algebra? <laughs> algebra or calc. Don't think about that. Think about the things that you want to learn. I bet you, you didn't go to school to learn things that you're actually interested in. Did you? And if you did, like, congratulations. Um... But I bet that there's something extremely specific that you want to learn about that you did not go to school for. So take this time to learn. And you don't have to, like, learning doesn't mean sitting down and, like, reading a bunch of articles about something, like, and becoming an expert. No, that's really boring. Like, you can watch a documentary, you can listen to a podcast, an audiobook. You can go out and, like, try to live a lived experience of it. Like, so for me, I'm really interested in Buddhism. Um, here we have a ton of shrines like I'm in Japan obviously I know I'm luckier than some like I can really go out and like look at them and be in them obviously with corona they like allow like a lot less engagement as they did before so maybe it will take a little while for me to find a monk who um is willing to Japanglish with me but truly you can go out and like really search for the things you're interested in and just like keep learning every day um number two so remember when I mentioned the On Purpose podcast by Jay Shetty? Um, this is a big tip. Number two is play audiobooks, podcasts, and YouTube. Play it in the background. This is a big thing that helped for me that, like, I didn't think would help. But having, like, another voice with you is really soothing. And it really takes away the feeling of feeling alone. Um, I don't know, like, what it is psychologically. But, like now i'm almost addicted to it like if i'm doing something like brainless like cooking or like cleaning like there's always something playing in the background and like truly like there's never a point in that time where i'm like i'm alone because like you have somebody else in the room like talking to you you know it feels like that and sometimes if i'm really into like what they're saying or like a point is really connecting with me i find myself literally like answering back i'm like yeah i'm like hell yeah yeah you're right i'm like you know what totally like i find myself like talking back now that i'm saying this out loud it kind of seems sad but having that other voice really helps so honestly just like put on like a lifestyle kind of youtube channel put on living with mel in the background and just like let somebody else's voice like keep you company and like you know help you ride out the alone number three um, have a good schedule slash keep busy. So lately I've really been, um, making my schedule in a very specific way. And it is actually from the seven habits of highly effective people by Stephen Covey or Covey. I don't know how you say his last name, but, uh, yeah. So I've taken like kind of a model from that. I think I'm going to do a living with Mel where I show you guys how I create my schedule because honestly, lately it's really really helped but I'm not going to get into it here but in your schedule which you should have um you should be scheduling things that aren't obvious like you're not going to put Monday 9 a.m work like you know you have work for me like as a teacher I'm not writing Tuesday first period three one second period three two like because guess what there's already a class schedule made why am I writing in my schedule your planner and your schedule should be like goals for the week that are for your bigger goals and tasks so like right now if you're like mel i don't have like <laughs> if you're saying here like mel i don't have goals or tasks first of all i i need you to sit with yourself and figure that out and secondly if you're like oh mel i do have goals and tasks but right now you know i can't really do anything to work towards them or like i'm done for right now you're wrong you're wrong you have things to do right now. I promise you, if you have time to be bored, there are things you should be doing. 
like right now i have to write the gre in october so every day i am studying math and english every day sorry i was really thirsty anyways so yeah it's a lot um when i didn't have a schedule i wasn't really getting anything done so now that i write at a schedule I write every day, read four pages from my general GRE textbook, and do two sections of the GRE math textbook every day. Okay, that's one task. Another task that I put as an everyday task in my schedule is meditate. So meditate was something that I did do every day a little while back, but then I kind of got out of it, and then I was like, oh yeah, I'll meditate every day, and it was kind of just like when I remembered. But physically writing it down, like, every day like i can't check that box until i meditate and meditating is not something that you can kind of squish to the next day you can't just like meditate twice as hard the second day and cover for the day you skipped no like it's like a one-time experience so like physically writing it down i'm like okay that's another task and then i also have at least two other tasks planned and you're like mel that's like 14 ta you have 14 tasks to do for your greater goals girl when i say 14 tasks I mean like they can be really small things so my two other tasks for today don't laugh at me um, one of them was dealing with my box corner so for people who have been in my apartment recently you know exactly what I'm talking about I've ordered a lot of things online recently and you've probably seen it in my video it's like a corner of my apartment with all the empty boxes putting garbage away here is really specific so I've been like just dreading to deal with it. So I knew when I was planning out this week, I'm like, okay, deal with the box corner, it's going in. I wrote it on Thursday. And uh, yeah, I saw that, I saw the task today and I was like, today's the day. And you know what, actually. <sighs> Here it is. Here it is. And I'm putting this baby out. Yeah. <laughs> and my other task today, if you haven't guessed it already, was film and edit a YouTube video. So even though it's like almost 10 o'clock at night now, um, I already showered, you know, I'd rather be in bed. I told myself like, no, today I have a great YouTube video idea. I've written it all out. Like today I'm going to film it and edit it. So that's what I'm here doing. And honestly, today, like those sound like four tasks that could be really simple and easy. My day was full. My day is full. Again, it's 10 p.m. My day was full. I did try to hang out with someone. Thankfully, I couldn't because um, Corona interrupted those plans. But if I did, one of these things would have got pushed to the side or I wouldn't have done something. And you know what? That's not, that's not how I want to live. So yeah, that's my tip. Write a schedule and you will find out how busy you are and you will find out actually how much time you do need alone to finish these tasks that you should be finishing. Um, my last tip for when you're alone, connect or reconnect. So this, I mean, like, we always want to go out and like be with our friends or like meet new people, but often we forget about like the friends that we used to have or like the family, not the family used to have, but the family we do have, but haven't talked to in a while. Um, now that we're here by ourselves, like maybe the reason why we don't talk to our friends anymore is because we moved away or like we, they, we were friends with them in school and now we're back home. Like there's many reasons why we don't talk to our old friends as much, but when you're alone, like you can reach out to them and you can also reach out to family. Like I think with this tip, I'm actually more specifically talking about family. Like, do you have a brother? Do you have a sister? Do you have multiple brother sisters? Do you have a mom? Do you have a dad? Stepmom? Stepdad? Do you have grandparents? How many? Do you have aunts? Uncles? Do you have cousins you're close to? I bet you had to at least say yes once. Or do you have people who acted as aunts or uncles or cousins? People who you weren't family with but who you said, oh this is my cousin or you know, this is my uncle. Like they've done a lot for you in, in your life. Yeah, when was the last time you called them? or emailed them or skyped them or zoomed them when was the last time you told them you loved them and missed them and you're like mel don't do this to me like i'm doing it i'm doing it if you took one week one week to contact every single one of your family members like 
I'm not saying like distant, distant relatives. I just mean like family members who have done things in your life or who have helped shape you, you for who you are or who have helped you out recently. Like this is obviously moms, dads, grandparents, um, siblings, a really good aunt or uncle. If you take a week and contact every single one of them, call them and say, I miss you, I love you. I'm not going to tell you how long the conversation is. Like, I'm not going to tell you a time limit. You only have to, to say two things. I miss you. I love you. You are going to be so busy. Because not only are you going to call them and, like, they're going to be out. So you're going to have to figure out when you can call them. You're going to figure out when you're free, when they're free, when you're both free. You got to email, especially for me, like, with the time difference. I have to, like, email. I have to set up times, like an appointment. You will be so busy trying to contact everyone. And then when you get on that call and tell them you miss them, you love them, like it's gonna brighten their day and they're gonna talk to you. They're gonna tell you what's going on in their life, which is gonna make you wanna tell them what's going on in your life. And the conversation is gonna be like an hour, sometimes two hours. And there you go, that's two hours that you just spent not being alone. And then after you've done what I've told you to do for one week straight, do it again every week every week call these people tell them you miss them and love them maybe at the beginning they're going to be like why the heck do you keep calling me like are you dying like are you into drugs do you need money what's happening but after a while they're going to be like oh yep you know mel calls around this time or like i'm expecting a call from so and so soon and like it just becomes part of their routine it comes part of your routine and again this ties back into keeping busy and having a schedule Soon you find time being filled up in your days. So you don't have time to be bored and you don't have time to be lonely and alone. So this is a big, big tip. And that's my last tip for um, when you're actually alone, how to be alone. Okay, and my last two tips are when you're not alone, but how to make you feel less lonely in general. So when you go to hang out with other people, now that you've been well equipped from your time being alone, and you know how you like to spend your time, spend your time with people the way you want to spend time. So don't go and hang out with your friends and do something you don't want to do. Because when you're done hanging out with them, you know, you're not going to feel satisfied. You're not going to feel satiated because you've just spent time doing something you want to do. So hanging out with your friend has now been dampened because you've been doing things that you don't enjoy. And if you have friends who don't like doing things that you don't like to do that's fine like and if you don't like what they like doing that's kind of fine but I'm like confused why you guys are friends if you guys don't like doing the same things but there is something called compromise I'm pretty sure you can find something new that both of you guys haven't done that you will both enjoy so settle on that don't do things don't do passive activities with friends so don't hang out with someone and like watch Netflix don't hang out with somebody and like Sorry, my upstairs neighbors are getting rowdy. Um, don't like go to a movie because like then you're just going to see someone just to like sit beside them and quietly exist. And I know that sounds very beautiful and like inner peace and shit, but like, no, you're not, you're not going there to just sit next to them and like essentially watch paint dry. You're going to see them because you miss them. You want to know what's been going on in their life and you know you want to connect. You want to feel like that friendship, that connection, and you have to talk to feel that connection. Um, and sometimes you need to do a little more than talking. So I suggest doing an engaging activity. When you're hanging out with someone, try to do something engaging, especially like something that's kind of task oriented, orientated, task oriented. There we go, English. It is what I teach to the Japanese youth. Anyways, um, so do something that it uses your brain, like go do like sports together. I'm like, I'm like, what do people do? Like if you guys both like golf or like if you're not golfers, like mini putt, like do the same task. Why I say this is because when your brain is focused on a task, it's focused on how you can do it the best. So, you know, if you're out for a round of golf, your brain is thinking, you know, how can I hit this in such a way? How's the wind blowing? Whatever golfers think. All I'm saying is your brain is now putting on a filter of how to do this task the best. Well, your friend, 
their brain is also putting on that filter. So now whatever conversation you're having is being put through a filter and suddenly like your brains are on the same wavelength because they're both trying to do the same thing. So whatever conversation you're having, your brains are going to process it the same way and they're going to just like understand you better because your brain is already working together on a different task. Does this make sense? So this could be like playing a video game together. Like it doesn't have to be sports. If you don't like sports, you'd be playing a video game together. Like your brain is putting on a filter of how to best do something, but so is your friends. So your brain is analyzing things in the exact same way. So whatever conversation you're having or whatever you're talking about is gonna be much more easily understood by the other person. So do engaging things. Also engaging things um, forces you to talk to the other person. It forces you to communicate because sometimes you need the other person's help. You need the other person's help to solve the task or do the thing, you know? So definitely don't do a passive task or don't do a passive activity with your, with your friends. So if you do engaging activities and you're having these good connections and meaningful conversations when you're with your friend, after you hang out with your friend, you're going to feel like 100 level satisfied with the hang so when you go home you're not going to feel lonely because your quota like your friendship hang with people quota is going to be completely full because you're going to be completely satisfied so that's one tip the second tip for when you're with people is if you're the type of person who are like mel shut up shut the hell up like I'm so alone, I'm so lonely, I crave touch, like I need a girlfriend or I need a boyfriend because like I just want to hold someone, I just want to cuddle, I just want somebody to rub my head, you know, I need that. No, you need intimacy and you can find intimacy from your friends and family. If you're thinking I need a girlfriend or boyfriend because like I need some hugs, I need some love in, like you're already getting into this kind of dangerous game of like you want you want somebody somebody to serve you in some sort of physical way like that should never be a reason to look for a, a relationship you shouldn't like yes we can all crave like oh i want somebody to cuddle at night yes but when you're in that mindset of like i need a girlfriend or i need a boyfriend because i want to be cuddled at night you're already saying like that's something that they have to do like it's a requirement that they have to do so that's not good that's not like why we should be looking to into getting into relationships um, but if you're having these thoughts, I bet your friends and family are also having these thoughts. So here I am, PSA, normalize intimacy and friends, like hug your friends, hug your friends, kiss your friends. Well, maybe not because of Corona, maybe don't kiss your friends because it's Corona, but hold hands with your friends. As long as you are both washing your hands, wash your hands and then hold your hands together hold your wa washed wash each other's hands <laughs> don't do that don't do that but truly like if you want someone to like pat your head like be like can you pat my head i'm sure they'll say yes like obviously don't try to force the human equivalent of a hedgehog to cuddle you like we all have that friend who like doesn't like they're like don't touch me i don't like physical closeness obviously I'm not telling you to go and hug those people or force them to hold your hand but you at least have one friend or family member who also would enjoy like a hug like go find them and if you all of your friends and family are like the human like equivalent of a hedgehog then you need to ask yourself are you a hedgehog <laughs> But truly, you're going to find somebody who will be totally okay with giving you a little snuggle. And this is totally for guys. Girls have, like, less of a hard time doing this. If you're a guy, like, go fucking ask for a hug. It's not that hard. I'm sure your mom would love to give you a hug. There is no better hug than a hug from a mom. Mom, if you're watching this, I'm going to cry. I haven't had a mom hug in over a year. Over a year, my guy. So go ask your mom for a hug. Say it's from Mel. And she asked who Mel is, make her subscribe to my YouTube channel. <laughs> and then I can hug your mom. <laughs> but no, seriously, introduce intimacy with your friends and families. Like, it's not weird. I don't know what kind of, like, crazy simulation that we live in where we can't, like, be intimate with our friends and family. That's wrong. Like, we love them. We can show them that we love them. Okay? So, yeah, that's that last tip. 
All right, so yeah, those are my six in total tips on how to be alone. Um, and now I hope you guys, after watching this video, are like dying to be alone. You're like looking at the people around you being like, there are way too many people here. Time to get my me time on. Seriously though, like, it's not that bad. Like, it's not, it's not bad. Just try it. Like, try it for a second. Like, don't just dip your toe in and be like, eh, not for me. I don't like it. Like, try to do these things that I've said learn a new skill, create a schedule, start working on your goals, make the time you spend with others more meaningful, and I promise you that lonely isn't going to be a feeling for you anymore. You're going to be completely stimulated by yourself in your everyday life. So if you liked this video, well, you know what to do because it's in the name. But yeah, so if you're my friend, like and subscribe. If you're my enemy, like and subscribe. If you're anybody, like and subscribe. And if you don't know what to do, I've told you a million times. So just like and subscribe. But uh, yeah, I hope to add many more segments. Um, is that the right word I'm looking for? Many more pieces in this Living With Mel. I hope this was useful for you guys. I hope this was like, maybe give you like one little aha moment. Or like one little, hey, I think I'm going to try that. Um, and if it does, please comment down below if you, like, have been doing one of these things or you want to try one of these things, comment down below, let me know. Um, if you have any ideas for other Living With Mel things that you want to see, let a girl know. And, uh, yeah, I had so much fun hanging out with you guys, so I can't wait to see you guys next. Bye!